Let's continue to make option trading simple by understanding these Greeks, specifically Delta. Thanks Josette for upvoting on this one. In this video, I'm going to use my design thinking skills to do a deep dive on Delta, going through some of its nuances and show you some examples of how Delta will impact calls and puts in option trading. Ready to learn a bit more to become an option trading pro? Let's begin. Morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley, and I'm here today to use design to explain Delta, one of the five common Greeks in option trading. This is the agenda for this deep dive on Delta, and we will go down the list one by one. And if you know my style, you don't have to smash the like button just yet, do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful, hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's dive right into Delta. As I mentioned in the previous video, Delta describes how much would the option price go up for every dollar the underlying stock increases. So now let's first look at the relationship between Delta and call option contracts. For every one dollar the stock increases, the call option contract price will go up by the Delta amount. If the stock drops one dollar, then of course, the call option contract price will go down by the Delta amount as well. This 1100 Tesla call expiring on December 31st, 2021, it has a Delta of 0.3252 roughly 0.33, meaning if Tesla, the stock, goes from 1069.3 to 1070.3, $1 increase. This call option contract price will actually go up from 1740 to 1772.52, adding the delta 32.52 amount, which is multiplied by 100, as you know, in option trading, it trades in the block of 100. If Tesla, the stock, drops $1, to 1068.3. Then this call option contract price would go from 1740 to 1707.48. On the flip side, for puts, this relationship is still true. You will see for puts, the delta is actually negative. It makes sense that it's negative and it should be. The reason being, for puts, we know that if the stock price goes up, the put option contract price goes down. If I buy the put, I don't want that. But if the stock price goes down, the put option contract price will go up. If I were to buy a put, this is what I wanted because that's how I can make money if I think the stock is gonna go down. Now let's connect that relationship to Delta and let's do this 1060 Tesla put as an example. If Tesla, the stock, goes from 1069.3 to 1070.3, $1 increase. By definition, this put option contract price will go up by the Delta amount. However, the Delta is negative 0.45, a negative value. That means this 1060 Tesla put option contract price will go up by negative $45. And as you know, elementary school math, adding negative 45 just means minus 45, which leaves the price of this option to be 2883 minus 45 equals 2838. This matches what we talked about earlier, right? The stock goes up, the put price goes down. It goes down because delta here is negative. And now you should see things in a full circle. Then on the other hand, if Tesla, the stock, drops $1, goes from 1069.3 to 1068.3, this 1060 put price will drop by the delta amount, so it will decrease by negative 45. Well, again, elementary school math, decrease a negative value. Double negative, it means positive. Therefore, the put option contract price will actually go up by $45 from $28.83 to $29.28, which again matches what we talked about earlier. The stock goes down, the put option contract price goes up, all due to this negative delta value. So next, let's talk about the range for delta. The range of delta goes from negative one to one, depending on whether it's call or put, they're different. For call option contracts, it's from zero to one. Everything is positive. Zero is a low value, one is high. For put option contracts, it goes from negative one to zero. Zero being low, negative one being high. You can just focus on the numeric value, the absolute value, and ignore the negative sign. Tesla call option, for example, the more it is in the money, the higher the delta will be. The current share price of Tesla stock is 1069.3. A $1,000 Tesla call is in the money, which has a 0.8 delta. $800 Tesla call is even deeper in the money. It's a delta of 0.9828. A $200 Tesla call is even deeper, 
which has a delta of 0.9979. This leads to another point. The higher the delta is, the more this option would behave like a stock. If a call option has a delta of 1, it will map option to stock 1 to 1. That means this call option is very very much the same thing as a stock. And I will explain that just in a second. To understand that, we first need to understand the relationship between delta and the option price. And let's start with an example. Let's say I think Tesla is going to go up next week. I want to profit from it. I can buy stocks. I can buy 100 shares at the market price, which will cost me about 106.9k. Then let's say Tesla actually goes up goes up $10 from 1069.3, the current price, to 1079.3. And then I sell all my 100 shares at 1079.3. I will profit a total of 10 times 100 equals $1,000. Or I can do it through call options. I buy a $1,000 call for 7.7K, since this $1,000 Tesla call has a delta of 0.8. And we said Tesla, the stock, will go up $10. We know how deltas work, right? For every single dollar, the stock increases. The option price will go up by the delta amount. Since Tesla, the stock, goes up by $10, the 1,000 Tesla call option contract will go up by 10 times 0.8, the delta, times 100, the multiple, which equals $800 to $8,500. Technically, it should go up by a little bit more because there is a gamma which affects delta. It makes delta bigger for every dollar Tesla stock increases. But just for the simplicity of the math, let's just say delta stays the same. Then if I sell the $1,000 call, I can profit $800. So far it should be fairly straightforward how you can profit from buying and selling stocks and buying and selling call options. And in these two examples, there are actually two things to notice. First one, to compare the profit from stocks to that of call options. Buying and selling 100 shares seem to make more profit, right? It's 1,000 versus 800. That is true. However, if we look at the percentage of gain, that's a different story. For $1,000 gain in stocks, we need to spend 106.9K as capital. So the percentage of gain we have here is 0.94%. On the other hand, in the call option example, we only used 7.7K as capital to make $800, which gives us a 10.4% gain, meaning I can use less money to make a higher percentage of return. Plus, where do I get that 1.609K from? I'm not gonna stand my kidneys. No. You might notice that to calculate the profit from buying and selling a call option, it's basically the delta times 100 times the dollar amount increase of the Tesla stock. The profit is 800 here because delta is 0.8 and the price goes up $10, which makes total sense because that's the definition of delta. Now imagine we have a 1.0 delta, then the profit will be 1 times 100 times 10 equals 1000. Just the same amount as by buying and selling 100 shares of Tesla stock. It's exactly $1,000 profit, whether it's with 100 shares of Tesla or with a Tesla call with a 1.0 delta. That's why I said if you have a 1.0 delta on a call option, this call will behave pretty much the same way as if you own 100 shares of stock. Because if you have 100 shares of stock, the stock goes up $1 and your total stock value will go up $100. And a call option with a 1.0 delta will also go up $100. Purchasing a call option contract allows me to buy 100 shares. That's the definition of a call. In my opinion, that doesn't mean I'm actually controlling 100 shares. Because for example, with a 0.8 delta, it's more like I'm controlling 80 shares. Because you know, if Tesla, the stock goes up $1, my call option contract only goes up $800 instead of $1,000. Because of this nature, high delta to me, it means high control, because technically it equals to more shares. And because of that, it tends to be more expensive. Lower delta has less control, but it's cheap. A call option contract with 0.6 delta, I have a control of about 60 shares. If it's 0.8 delta, I have a control of 80 shares. 1.0 delta, I control 100 shares. However, there's always a catch. You can hardly find a delta of 1.0. Even the really deep in the money, the deepest you can get, the $200 Tesla call, is still not 1.0. It's close, but not 1.0. Next, delta in the money, out of the money. I think ITM and OTM deserve another video, but let me just briefly go over it here because it's essential. Let's say I buy a call option contract. The moment that I buy it is in the money and it can expire in the money or out of money, and vice versa. If a call option contract expires out of the money, it loses all its option value. The option contract price will drop to zero. 
You can see it happen in my live simulation in this video. I will have it linked in the corner and description down below. Therefore, I absolutely want my call to be in the money when it expires. However, there's nothing I can control, there's nothing I can do to make sure it will land in the money. I cannot control where it lands on the expiration date. All I can control is my initial purchase. Generally speaking, the more in the money an option is, whether it's a call or put, the more likely it will stay in the money at expiration, which is what I want. As we mentioned earlier, high delta correlates directly to how deep in the money an option is, which means the higher the delta is, the more likely that option will expire in the money, which is what we want. To go back to the example in the beginning, if I bought an out of the money call option, it could still end up in the money if the underlying stock goes up enough. So there's literally no guarantee to compare the two. High delta options are more expensive, but they're more likely to end up in the money. Low delta options are cheap and they are likely end up out of the money with which you can lose all your money. But if you win, if it ends up in the money, it can pay out really nicely. There is actually a real statistic called probability in the money. Unfortunately, this does not exist on Robinhood. There is something called the chance of profit on the mobile version of Robinhood. I don't know how Robinhood calculates that, but that doesn't seem like to be the same thing as probability in the money. So I will just use the TD Ameritrade thing of Supreme Platform as a demo. We can look again at all those three options. 200 strike, 1000 strike, and 1100 Tesla strike calls. We will see the probability in the money to be 100%, 80.63%, and 34.25% respectively. Of course, since this is a probability, there's no guarantee that it will stay the same. This number will change on a daily basis, but at least I will have an idea at the moment that I want to buy a call option contract by looking at this metric, looking at this statistic. So we can add this to the relationship chart that the higher the delta is, the higher the probability in the money for this option. I want to keep this video short and sweet, so I'm not going to cover how I personally use delta to trade options. If you are interested in seeing how I do it, feel free to leave a comment down below. To put all those examples, demos, and information in one place, for every $1, the underlying stock price increases. The option price will go up by the delta amount. This is the definition of delta in the Greeks, in option trading. To break it down further, high delta means high probability in the money, which means it's more likely on the expiration date, your option will not be worth zero, which means it tends to be a safer bet. And of course, because of this, it comes with a more hefty price tag. It will cost more to buy this option. Lastly, high delta options also mean they will behave more like stocks with high option price change for every dollar stock price change. Alright guys, we have covered quite a lot today. Understanding Delta should give you a sense of what different strike prices mean so that you can compare your own risk tolerance and conviction of a particular stock so that ultimately you can trade options with informed knowledge and make some sweet, sweet money. If you have any thoughts or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. There are more related topics I plan to cover in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you have learned what you wanted, well, congratulations. I hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you like free money and don't mind just two minutes of work, you can use my referral codes for one free stock from Robinhood, two free stocks from Webull, $10 worth of Bitcoin from BlockFi, and lastly, $5 free cash from the Cash App. If you sign up for that, in addition, I will give you $2 worth of Apple stocks. Great deal. Dividend paying stocks. You can find all the referral codes, links, and instructions in the description down below. If you want to see more finance by design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.